Last time, during part one of What If Naruto Had Dark Matter released, the clash between Naruto and Sasuke at the Valley of the End triggers the accidental creation of Dark Matter release, courtesy of Kurama's influence over Naruto's chakra. Though, despite this, Sasuke would still manage to escape. Subsequently, this would cause Naruto's hospitalization and him falling ill for several days, until Jiraiya, whom would intervene to stabilize Naruto's seal and bring him back up to health. This would result in a fusion of chakras and characterized by a distinct purple hue, granting Naruto a range of new abilities, including a capacity to remotely explode air and also the manipulation of air density and to a degree also gravity. Alongside these newfound powers, Naruto undergoes a noticeable shift in personality towards a more grim and realistic demeanor, reshaping his aspirations, while Sakura's decision to not address Sasuke's departure alters their interpersonal dynamics. And then, after the natural events of the Naruto time skip, in a bell test scenario with Sakura, Naruto would confront Kakashi, utilizing his gravity manipulation like abilities to restrict Kakashi's movements, ultimately securing victory without needing to resort to previously utilized tactics, such as attempting to spoil the conclusion of Make Out Paradise. And with that, we find ourselves at the events that lay later in this video but before we get into that if you're interested in any of the artwork you see throughout this video most of these pieces were created by myself and i actually do provide these services of creating fan art and ocs for certain anime over on fiverr if you're indeed interested go and check out the links are down in the description and i am also pretty active over on my discord the tabletop tavern so if you have discord feel free to stop by and have a chat so without further ado let's get started Nezuko, believe it whoever insults my hair will get the full brunt of my fury shut up you idiot hey it's me goku As the hawk is received and its message is translated from its prior encryption, it is revealed that both the Sen and Kaze Kage had been attacked. And as most of us know, the current standing Kaze Kage is Gara. Obviously, this would be some new news to Naruto and some other key individuals, but Naruto, along with the newly named Team Kakashi, consisting of Kakashi himself, Sakura, and obviously Naruto, would set out for their so-called mission, I could say, to go and save Gara, or at least help the Sand in any way possible. There is one quick change I would make, and this is the fact that their travel might go somewhat faster, to the point where I'm willing to say we can cut off about 25 to 50 percent of the time they originally took meaning Sakura might have a easier time healing Konkuro and their search for Gara might go a lot hastier but obviously I need to explain how this happens of course Naruto would use his gravitational type abilities to place pointers or what I like to call points on individuals which would then control and distribute the gravity that's being forced down on their body through the use of dark matter obviously by lightening the amount they are obviously able to have less force pushing down on them meaning whilst being chakra enhanced they will move at extreme speeds so whilst we might still have a similar scene in canon where kakashi is scolding naruto for trying to get there almost immediately this time, I do think Kakashi would tell Naruto to take caution, but since the ample speed goes up, they would rather try and keep up with Naruto. This is where we are in that vague spot between 25 and 50 percent. Thus, we would lead into Chiyo still attacking Kakashi like normal, thinking that he is his father, which would lead to an explanation, with Sakura preparing the herbs, or at least trying to prepare the herbs, being short of these special type of medicinal flower i believe that they barely have in growth or in season i don't really know how to explain it but as per usual they would get the herb maybe quicker maybe not and still end up healing conquero 
that would once again lead to the parchment of Sasori's cloak, I believe, as thus would leave us to see Kakashi summon his dogs, which would then help us track down the Akatsuki. That was a pretty rushed segment, but now we can get into a calmer one. As the pup or Paku would track down the Akatsuki, we would hear that Team Guy are on route. And hearing that Naruto and them had already arrived within the sand, Guy and Lee would be all too eager to catch up to their rivals or so-called rivals as they would force Ten Ten and Neji to suffer dragging along with them. I still do not think that Guy and Lee and even Team Guy would catch up to Naruto's team fast enough as I think they would be encountered with Itachi's clone premeditated. Thus meaning they might know it's a clone much easier or even be able to dispatch of it easier with the small threat of Kisume's clone popping up being a possibility. And in this specific case it will be a possibility and not only that a guarantee. As they now stand face with whom they believe to be Kisume Hushigaki and Itachi Uchiha. Our seemingly bout would not immediately begin as we would start off with a toss of words with both sides having something to say to the other, which would lead us to some similar interaction to canon with Itachi attempting to put everyone under a genjutsu, but immediately this would basically trigger an interesting reaction from Naruto. Naruto had spent a lot of time trying to control the Nine Tails because of its early burst out in the seal, and as time progressed, if he let go of his emotions or got angry, the Nine Tails energy would easily leak. And moments upon Itachi attempting to throw a Genjutsu, Naruto would have leaked at least a cloak. Thus would be more or less unaffected by the Genjutsu, since it is not of Mangekyo level, it was only a base Sharingan Genjutsu, with Naruto gaining the opportunity to increase the gravity around Kisame and Itachi whilst lightening it around himself, he would be able to rush the Itachi clone and hit it successfully, or what seems to be successfully, with the Rasengan, or some sort of unstable Rasengan. But as always, Kisame and his trusty blade Samehara would intercept this. This is where things start getting odd and kind of out of proportion for how it would usually go. We all know that Naruto's chakra is very unstable and corrupt at this point, and unlike how Samehara usually likes both normal chakra and tailed beast chakra, this form of unstable chakra actually hurts Samehara. It would spike up and throw itself out of Kisume's hand as it would crawl out of reach. Obviously, this would stun both the clone of Kisume and the real Kisume controlling him, as even Itachi would be surprised. This leaves an opening for Sakura and Kakashi to break out of their respective Genjutsu and possibly try to attack either Kisume, who is now no longer armed, and Itachi, who would probably predict all of this. Thus, I would think there would be a bout between the full Team 7 and the group between Itachi and Kisume. So, thus we would begin a fight between them, with me thinking most likely that Naruto would attempt to take on Itachi because of his connection to Sasuke, while he would thus ask Kakashi and Sakura to keep up with Kisame. I do think, personally, that Kakashi would have at least some trouble with Kisame, as I think Kisame and Itachi would have at least trained with each other on occasion, meaning Kisame should know the bare basics of avoiding the Sharingan's prediction. Thus, I think this is a perfect matchup, meaning Naruto gets to show off a lot of what he got, already having leaked the one tail, and Kakashi might needing to start his process of awakening the Mangekyo early. And that's exactly what would happen. Sakura would have to take up a stalling position against Kisame as Kakashi would try to awaken his eye. He would land the occasional taijutsu kick or so as he himself would also have two hands crossed over his eye, channeling as much chakra into it as possible. Itachi is curious on what he's doing, 
But when Kisame asks, Itachi does not reply. Obviously, he is wondering why his opponent or his friend is neglecting him as he is curious, but there is always the chance of Itachi not knowing. In hindsight, Itachi does know what is going on, and Kakashi starting to awaken his hidden mangekyo and is low-key proud of his former comrade as he does want him to succeed. On the other hand, we see Kisame easily avoiding a lot of Sakura's attacks, but being somewhat frustrated that he cannot currently find the clone version of Samehara, as it could really help in this fight. On the other hand, he knows if he gets hit by a single one of Sakura attacks, this could be over with. Then we move on, or at least to the side, to see what's happening between Naruto and Itachi. And this is where I think things will get really interesting. The more angry Naruto gets, the more tales would leak. And in my estimation, I would say at most three tales, but for now we are sticking to one as Naruto would still be fully in control and logical, knowing that the tail is there, he would use it to his advantage to increase the gravitational field around Itachi a lot more than is normally possible, putting Itachi in a scenario where he has to play the dodge game. Obviously, he could just awaken his Sharingan and kill Naruto, which Kisame would probably point out, but Itachi would afterwards, when this is all over, explain that he doesn't want to, thus it might speed up his death and he might never get to talk to his brother again. Obviously, Kisame knows this is something very important to Itachi, so he might not even push on it. So, Naruto's progression on fighting Itachi, or at least the stalling of Itachi, whilst being able to talk to him and constantly breaking out of Itachi's genjutsu without trying, would leave Kisame with the attempt to attack Naruto. This is where I think the first Kamui of our little what if scenario here would come in, with Kakashi trying to Kamui away Kisame, but instead does one of Kisame's jutsu, not having full accuracy on this technique yet. Obviously now, this leaves a proud Itachi with a curious Kisame, as he does not know what just happened. But as his own, his own eyes hone on Kakashi's, he can make out the shape of not so much a Sharingan, but a Mangekyo. This is when Kisame would get hit in the side of the face with what is seemingly Samehara, as blood would spurt from where the sword was. But this isn't Kisame's blood. This is the person that was holding Samehara's blood, and it's a man completely dressed in green with a bulb cut and thick eyebrows? Kisame would turn his head and say, Green Beast, as Guy would reply, I am Mike Guy of the Hidden Leaf. Have I met you before? As Kisame would face palm as always, being yet another interaction with Guy. Guy would finally drop Samehara as he would go into a fighting stance. This would leave a able Kakashi, Guy, Lee, who would arrive shortly after Guy, and possibly even Neji and Tenten to back up Naruto. In this specific case, I do think Lee, Neji, and Naruto would probably be the best match for Itachi, as I think at this point Guy would have explained to Lee while fighting against a Sharingan user to pay attention to their feet. And on top of that, Neji not being in too much danger since using the Byakugan to look at it from a different view. So this Taijutsu kind of trio would be a perfect match for the Itachi clone, most likely eventually gaining the upper hand and dispersing it before I think Kisame is dispersed as he would now have his Samehara back. It is unclear if Samehara would work against a distanced Kamui, but I truly do not think it would, as that is just an unexplainable technique, and how Mangekyo techniques usually work would at least say that would not occur. So this leaves us with the inevitable 7v1 to the Kisame clone, which I think would once again go in the 7 direction. So this would leave our team on a head start to the Akatsuki base. 
Obviously, we could make the assumption that they could get there at the same time, thus to getting lost, but I do think they will make it in ample time, with Kakashi also having pre-prepared his Kamui, maybe being a bit tired, but due to Naruto's gravitational lightning, he will have a much easier trip. And if it really gets bad, Guy might just carry him. So as we arrive to the field of at least the doorway to the Akatsuki hideout, I think in this case Naruto would be able to analyze the seal as he had more time to do other things with Jiraiya. I think seals would have been one of them, seeing as his own seal was an important matter that they had currently and continuously discussed. So we now see Naruto analyzing the seal and explaining it to Team Guy and his own team as they would spread out to thus destroy the seal. Get on to the same set of events, Team Guy would still go on to remove the tags and face their clones. But come back to that later, Team 7 themselves would finally be able to get in as Sakura would still destroy the rock, or maybe Naruto, really anyone can do it, but... Moving on, Naruto wastes no time after seeing Gaara, who would be alive since they did arrive about three hours early. As he put up a gravity field inside of the cave, making Sasori data afloat, kind of catching them off guard, but Naruto would use this opportunity to take Gaara and get out, out of there. As Sakura would also take this chance, hopping in and going for a straight punch to Sasori, which would destroy his outer shell. And the real one of him would be just fine. But eventually the anti-gravity thing wears off and Deidara ends up making a clay burn and would give chase to Naruto with Kakashi following suit. As Sakura and Chiro would be left to deal with Sasori as in canon. As uh, Suri and Chiyo would probably have a little, you know, talk, some brief dialogue exchanges, you know, not much different from in canon. But the talk eventually ends as Sasori will bring out the third Kaze Kage puppet instead of, you know, in the beginning, um, Sakura and Chio dodging poison needles, it'd be them dodging poison sand until they could get an opening to destroy the puppet. This leads to about the same maneuvers as in canon with Sakura lock knocking away some of the iron sand, you know, Chio, you know, bring her back using her proper tier skills and basically them doing the same teamwork they did as in canon as Sakura still off guards the third Kazakage puppet and destroys it with a punch. From here Sasori still brings out all his different scores, the first one being fire which they hide behind rocks from in water which would destroy the rocks. This eventually leads to Sasori using his final scroll and bringing out the hundred puppet jutsu. Chio ends up bringing out her different puppets, her 10 different puppets, and the 12 eventually start bashing their way through Sasori's, you know, 100 puppets. And as in canon, Sakura ends up taking out the main body the same way she did as in canon. Sasori, since the score wasn't destroyed, still switches to another body and, you know, stabs Sakura in the back. And Chio still takes Sasori out using the puppets of his mother and father. She still heals Sakura. Sasori still gives up the information about, you know, Orochimaru, you know, that key info. And eventually Sasori dies. Anyways, eventually back to Team Guy fighting their clones. And they'd eventually finish that about the same way as in canon. As in canon. As in canon. And unfortunately, that will have to be all for today. Anyways, I do hope you guys have enjoyed this part. And if you didn't, feel free to go check out something else on the channel. I'm sure you'll find something to enjoy. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're ever feeling lonely, come down to the Discord server where you can see Six personally scolding his editor, Raijin Sage. Oh, I think that's him now. Bye!